It's pretty easy to say that every aspect of conventional health advice, what the average person has been told their entire lives, is quite the opposite of the truth. And the foods that average person eats every summer are no exception to that. Starting with corn, oh wee boys! And it is kind of odd that we treat corn like a vegetable on the grill as it's actually a grain. In traditional cultures, proper preparation of any grain involves soaking, fermenting, extensive cooking to reduce the anti-nutrients and negative compounds as much as possible. Plus, we've engineered corn to be much higher in starch, higher yielding, which has made it edible in that form, you know, not including a lot of the unknown damage GMO modified foods do to our bodies. Of course, we have to mention the agrochemicals, herbicides, pesticides, fungicides, insecticides that are used on almost all crops, especially something like corn, which also gets the worst of it, glyphosate. You want to go organic with anything, especially corn, and even better, prepared corn foods tend to be better, like sprouted corn tortillas, or prepare it traditionally yourself, soak it, ferment it. The effort in sourcing and preparation is what turns most of these foods from unhealthy to healthy. Next up, we have fresh fruit. Watermelon is the first one that really comes to mind. Next would be those fruit salads that come in plastic containers everyone loves bringing to barbecues or picnics. Anti-nutrients aren't as much of a concern in fruits as some of the vegetables and grains, but there are certainly oxalate and flavonoid issues with certain ones. You can easily argue that you know those aren't an issue in nature, but when you have all of the chemicals we spray on fruit, combined with them sucking up all of the crap in the water table, the pollutants, even fluoride, chlorine, antibiotic residue, who knows what else, the combination becomes damaging to our body. You know, instead of our livers processing the natural plant compounds, they get stressed with these chemicals and accumulate damage, oxidative stress over time. Fructose plus chemicals plus flavonoids is a horrible concoction for your liver, you know, especially if the fruit is pasteurized or older, sitting around, lacking the vitamin C, which might be alleviating some oxidative damage. You want to go organic and pick fruits that are easiest on your stomach. You can experiment, maybe start with some apples or pears, then move on to things like berries. You know, bananas, kiwis, certain exotic fruits tend to be very irritating for people with sensitive stomachs. Now, salad is similar to fruit in that sense. However, the anti-nutrient profile is different and it's much lower calorie. So you're damaging your body even more, you know, without even getting what humans need for survival. The anti-nutrients tend to inhibit thyroid function and since it's low calorie, it's higher in water, which means more pesticides are being sucked up. The simple goal of most animals, including humans, is to survive, to reproduce, salad being the opposite of that. Definitely not something we would have ever consumed in nature, maybe something we would have added in small amounts to meat and grain-based dishes. The macronutrient nutrition cannot sustain our bodies and it lacked significant bioavailable micronutrient nutrition, you know, which isn't giving us any vitamins or minerals we need for cellular processes. So you're getting a whole new spectrum of anti-nutrients Plus, the physical profile of salad makes it more susceptible to chemicals. You know, when sprayed in the field, every single leaf is basically covered. It's not like a banana or apple, even watermelon, that has some type of thick skin or rind where the outside can protect the inside to some degree. And then people wash their salad leaves in chlorinated, fluoridated tap water before eating them, whereas fruit isn't typically washed. It's pretty easy to see why people that eat salad don't lose weight. You know, they're stressing their organs and entire digestive system with poison. If you really do enjoy that salad, then certain leaves like romaine lettuce might be lower in anti-nutrients and be sure to go organic to alleviate some pesticide concerns. And I guess we have to mention that certain lettuces, especially vegetables, are grown in human feces. There's a reason that E. coli and salmonella outbreaks tend to be from salads, these types of foods. So there's definitely a concern on that end as well. Grilled chicken is another very popular, obviously healthy food by modern standards. I've spoken 
about chicken and pork being much worse than beef because what those animals are fed translates more to the flesh. Their digestive systems aren't as filtered as something like a cow or a ruminant animal, which removes more of the negatives. And plants have more of a direct agrochemical and anti-nutrient concern. Conventional meats are full of inflammatory omega-6 and oleic acid, antibiotics, hormones, allergens, various molecular residues from everything in the animal's diet, things that we don't even know about because big industries don't want you to know that information. And you can see how the average person is getting poisoned by many ends of the spectrum. Organic chicken and pork usually aren't a safe enough bet. Even opting for conventional red meat is going to at least reduce the omega-6 content substantially, but you really want to make sure everything is wild quality, grass-fed, even organic. Last up, we have iced coffee and tea. I've done an extensive video on the anti-nutrient components of coffee, how it damages the adrenals. I've also mentioned how tea leaves tend to be high in fluoride and whatever chemicals are in the water they were grown with. The solution for coffee is to make your own iced Americano using espresso from organic beans. You cut down the exposure of the hot water to the beans, which means more flavor and less of the negatives, the caffeine, the anti-nutrients, the potential agrochemicals. I haven't really explored tea options, but I'm assuming there are dozens, if not hundreds, of different types of herbal teas that don't have the concerns of your regular black tea. You know, going organic there might help a little bit, but location sourcing is definitely relevant. If you guys can chime in on the comments below with any recommendations, and I think an herbal iced tea made with organic sugar with local raw honey is something that can be enjoyed on a daily basis in a healthy living context. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me today. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you can please drop a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Therefore, if you can please go to frank stefanocom to support me through all of my businesses. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you for tomorrow.